great interest in languages. Uh, although when I was 17, as an Anglophone growing up in Montreal, I essentially just spoke English, even though we had French at school, and I think that's quite typical. Uh, obviously, we had French. I had French from the age of whatever, grade two, grade three, and I did quite well in French in school, but I couldn't speak it. And then I happened to go to McGill. I had a professor who completely turned me on to French civilization, French culture, blah, blah, blah. And then if you're living in Montreal and you want to learn French, it's not that difficult to do. So that was kind of my epiphany. Uh, I subsequently went to France for three years, which helped me improve my French, obviously. Then I joined the federal government. I was sent to Hong Kong to learn Chinese. So in Hong Kong, they don't speak Mandarin, but I learned Mandarin in Hong Kong. So you don't necessarily have to be in the environment where the language is spoken. Uh, subsequently, I went to Japan, where I learned Japanese. There I was in the environment where the language is spoken. Uh, then over the years, I sometimes did a bit with languages, sometimes didn't. I had lots of books and stuff at home, and I always felt that the, the different ways that were available to learn languages or improve in languages weren't very good. And so in nine, uh, probably seven years ago, six years ago, a number of things made me interested, once again, in the subject of how to, subject of how to learn languages. A couple of things that really sort of were important to me. One was, in those days, the mini-disc player and then subsequently the MP3 player. The ability to have a very small device, a very portable device, with very high quality sound that you could always have with you. Because I, as when I was learning Chinese, I had a great big open reel uh, you know, tape recorder. So now it's possible to have the language with you all the time. And the second thing was the online dictionary. Because all the time I was learning language, my major motivation was content. I could never understand the grammatical explanations. I wasn't motivated to understand them. I couldn't remember them. I couldn't use them. They were irrelevant to me. So if I read a book, if I was doing Chinese or Japanese, I would just flip the pages with the grammar. All I wanted was content and a word list. But now, with an online dictionary, such as Babylon, you can take any content and you can start learning it. So if you combine sound with text, where you have instant access to dictionaries, you have, to me, a tremendous, the beginnings of a tremendous language learning environment. So that was kind of the beginning of the development of the system that we use. Uh, so, uh, you know, a couple of other comments to me. Language learning is what I call, it's all about me. Motivation and efficiency. Unfortunately, in our school system, we have typically an unmotivated learner and an inefficient learning system. And the results are not very good. So I read recently that in New Brunswick, for example, they, the Anglophone school system has 12 years of 30 minutes a day, and at the end of 12 years they found that the number of students who could speak French at an intermediate level was 0.68%. So they might just as well not have done it, because if they didn't do any French, they would probably have at least 0.68% whose father or mother was francophone or who was on a visit or something. So, in other words, and that's perhaps an extreme example, but it is in a bilingual province in Canada. It is the reality. And I feel it's the same with a lot of our ESL instruction. A lot of the language, and politically motivated language instruction in Canada is just a colossal waste of money. Because motivation and efficiency are rarely there. Have I reached my five minutes there? Okay. 30, sec 30, 30 seconds. seconds. So, uh, uh, you know, I've been listening recently because I've been learning Portuguese, Portuguese, and I've been listening to a, a Brazilian educator, Ruben Alves. Does anyone here speak Portuguese? Okay, you have to listen to Ruben Alves. He is phenomenal. But he talks about teaching as the art of creating hunger. And he, there's a lot of stuff then that flows from that. And he is... Uh, at any rate, I believe in that. As a, as a teacher, the, the teacher that I had back in, whenever it was, I can't remember, 40 odd years ago, who turned me on, he created hunger for French. Once you've created the hunger, the person will start flying. They'll go for it. So the key is to create the hunger. Unfortunately, the way in which we teach languages often discourages, turns off the hunger. Uh, so uh, I won't get into link right now because I'll, I'll, I'll talk about they, that later on. Some of, the, some of the other things that I, I feel about language learning is the importance of content, the importance of taking it in before you even worry about using it. In other words, I'm, I've been learning Russian. Uh, 
I, I don't hardly ever speak it, but I can speak it, but I can listen to Tolstoy, audiobooks, I can read, uh, but I do it on my own passively. And you needn't speak till you want to speak. And there should be no pressure on people to speak or perform until they want to. And the more you do the sort of passive listening and reading, the more you're building up your vocabulary, you're building up your capability so that when you want to or when you need to, you'll be in, you're more likely to succeed. So that's another thing, and uh, I'll leave it at that because there's a whole bunch of other stuff I, I will have to say, and I'll <laughs> turn the floor over to Robert. Thank you. Thank you very much, Steve, for uh, a nice ice-breaking session. Okay. Hi there. I'm, once again, I'm Robin Matthew, and I'm the author of Language Logic. And it's great to be in Vancouver, which is my hometown, but also I just finished a two-month book tour across Canada, so it's nice to finish it up right here in some few books. So what really motivated me to write this book was I wanted to give students, adults, basically the books for adolescents and adults trying to learn another language, and I wanted to give them a tool set of their own. So what most people don't know, here's a pause, trying to pause for you, is that adults can actually learn foreign languages more quickly than children. And that, a lot of people are like, Really? Is that true? And I'm going to tell you why, because this is important, because if you're learning another language, there is a difference between how children learn languages and how adults learn languages. And so if you, if you don't know that starting off, then it's going to make it a little bit harder for you to, to get going. So I'm going to tell you about it to give you some uh, information. So basically children benefit from something called mother ease, and so it's how adults speak to children. So they use a simplified grammar and a limited vocabulary. So they get the foothold in the language they need, but also the repetition that they need to then build upon those skills. So they're learning their first language as they're learning their second language. Okay? Adults, on the other hand, you look like adults. You act like adults for the most part. Right? And people want to speak to you like an adult. So when you're learning another language, you're entering at a higher level. So th what that means is the language you're encountering is going to be more complex in terms of sentence structure. And you're going to be encountering more vocabulary. So you're not necessarily going to be getting the repetition out of those language interactions that you would as a child. And so what I wanted to do with the book was really to put the language learner in control of their own language learning situation and concentrate on the two main skills, which is, I hate to say grammar because it's kind of a stigmatized word. It doesn't have to, grammar is an umbrella term for different things. So like punctuation, spelling, syntax, conjugation, all those kind of things. But what I really want to focus on is syntax and that's word order, structure, how the how the words are combined together. So there's syntax and there's vocabulary. And syntax and vocabulary, those two run through all the four other main skills. So reading, writing, listening, and speaking. So what I wanted to do with this book was to give people, language learners, a, like a smorgasbord full of different things they could do in order to approach language learning to be more successful. So it's what you don't know that holds you back. And so the longer people struggle, the less desire they have to learn. So what I want to do is remove some of the struggle for people, say, okay, here's this, here are the challenges you're going to face, and here's how to overcome them. So you're not reaching those plateaus along the way that you can really have uh, something that takes this kind of overwhelming task of learning language and streamlines it for you so you can get from beginner to advanced. So a lot of books out there, they, they show you what to do as a beginner, but there's nothing that takes you farther. And what takes you farther, that's where all, a lot of the enjoyment is. Because once you remove the struggle, you can then start to be yourself in that language. You can speak as you would, and you can you know, crack a joke, you can, you can participate, and you know, hold a conversation. That's really what most people want to do. They want to, they want to be able to understand, and they want to be able to underspeak, a lot of them. And so if you can't understand what people are saying, then you can't use any of the great skills that you've learned in order to speak to those people. So listening is a very important skill. So what I wanted to do was take this kind of massive task and streamline it for you. So each stage of the way, you knew how to acquire skills on you, you knew how to put yourself in control of the language learning situation. So if people are speaking too fast for you, you have ten skills in order to slow them down so you can, you can participate. So you're not at a loss, you're not sitting there for hours on end not understanding what people are saying, that you can actually participate and, and have ways to do that. So there's something that most people never heard of, it's called collocations, and it's one of the greatest language learning tricks around. And I'm going to explain to you what it is in English, so you can see how often they come about. And so a collocation is a three-word combination, three or more word combination. These are words that always come together. So in English, an example would be to look forward to something, right? And we fill in the blanks. So to look forward to, those three words always come together, okay? So the beginning of the sentence is structured for you. It stays the same. The second half, 
the structure stays the same. You're just changing it to suit your, it suits your needs. So I could say, I look forward to speaking at Sophia Books tonight. I look forward to going to France. I look forward to speaking another language. I look forward to traveling abroad. So you see how we can use this in different situations. So if you're not aware of these kind of tricks, these language tricks, then it's going to hold you.